Thank you, Clive. I'm just going to take that off the screen. So um, I chose this subject, uh, or welcome everybody. I chose this subject because uh, it's it's very current, particularly with the uh, advent of COVID and uh, the the fact that a lot of people have been driven out of the the office life and into the uh, that home environment and uh, also the fact that I'm sure with many of my other colleagues we're seeing patients who have got symptoms that are associated with uh, the sedentary lifestyle that we're all le leading now uh, far more but also particularly with the uh, working from home uh, and also in the office life uh, and, and working from a, uh, a workstation. Now um, you're probably all aware that uh, evolutionary wise we're supposed to be hunt hunter gatherers really yeah so our, our bodies are supposed to be out there running around and, and and moving constantly and and hunting for things rather than being in a very sedentary situation but unfortunately um, we are going through this phase where we, we are becoming far more uh, sedentary sitting for prolonged periods. I've just put up a graph, as you can see, uh, and what I've showed there is that, A, if you look at the left-hand side where it says sitting for prolonged periods, and that equates to a certain amount of symptoms that might, might uh, come about as a result of doing that. But this is often uh, then will be compounded by those that are sitting at work because you're not only sitting but you're having to be stuck at a workstation staring at a computer screen uh, working on your keyboard so the symptoms that you may then guess will increase incrementally because of that and then if you have poor posture or the ergonomics are wrong with your workstation this is going to compound the problem and so your symptoms may increase uh, exponentially because of that and because of COVID, as I just mentioned, people being driven into the home environment, it may be that you've got cramped or unsuitable environments at home in order to work uh, effectively and efficiently at your workstation. So that then gives a sort of maximal problem for uh, the musculoskeletal frame. And this is why we are seeing far more biomechanical problems uh, with patients who have been working from home. Um, but, but also over the, the last 20 years, I, you know, I noticed far more people coming in with problems just from actually office based working. I just want to highlight the change that has been occurring over the, the years uh, because of um, the way that we are having to work now with technology. Now, now 10 years ago, which isn't that long ago, there were only about 800,000 people who were, were working from home. Now, prior to the first lockdown, just prior to that, that had increased up to about 1.54 million. So it had doubled in, in that 10 year period up to the first lockdown. However, during the first COVID lockdown, 60% of the UK's adult population were then working from home, which equated to about 19.2 million people. And obviously, uh, since the restrictions were removed, a lot of people have been able to go back into the, uh, the office, but uh, quite a large proportion are still working from home, almost a third, uh, or they're doing what they call the hybrid working, uh, so a bit at home, a bit at work. And that equates to about 8.3 million people. So going from 800,000 people 10 years ago to 8.3 million people now, it's a huge explosion in the, in the changes in way in which people are working and the environments that they're having to work in. A study has been done recently, which, uh, which, which looked, well, actually it wasn't recent, it was 2015, but I suppose it relatively recently. Um, so this is probably conservative figures, in fact. So many people reported sitting for longer than five hours per day um, and having a sedentary, uh, with sedentary activities, making about 60 to 70 percent of, of their daily behaviour. So it is all just feeding into that um, lethargic sedentary lifestyle that we are we are leading. I don't know whether this applies to you, but if you are office based, you probably are going to be stuck at that workstation between five to 10 hours a day. 
and again, just re reiterating, we're not as a as a physical being uh, designed for for that sort of uh, activity, but we have little choice. So I, I guess um, you know we've got to make the best of what we've got in order to um, prevent all the problems that can occur through this, this sort of lifestyle. So I'm just going to highlight which parts of the human body are potentially affected by the sedentary uh, office-based lifestyle or, or particularly the working from home lifestyle. Now as an osteopath, clearly I work with the musculoskeletal frame predominantly. Um, and I was thinking, well, which areas would be the most um, poignant in, 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 in the patients that come in and complain the most? Well, actually, it could be anywhere because it, it has such a profound effect on so many different areas of, of the body, and both low back, neck, the shoulders, people coming with problems with their elbows, their wrists, hands, uh, even, even going into the, the knees. It, it has such a profound effect. So we've really got to get a grip on, on how we're, we're dealing with this. And as an osteopath, more specifically, I, I deal with the, uh, the vertebra. So often we get people coming in who are complaining of issues with those structures around the vertebra, the discs, the facet joints, because these are being affected uh, predominantly in, in areas of the spine, of the neck and the lumbar spine. But I will go into that in a bit more detail. So to, to show the actual um, gravity of the situation and, and what actually can, uh, can occur with, with these tissues. Not only that, looking outside the skeletal area, but the muscular function or the soft tissues of, of the human body. So we're looking at the muscles, the um, fascia, ligaments, the tendons, all these areas can be affected um, by having a sedentary lifestyle. And also some more slightly unusual areas you wouldn't perhaps associate with it, but obviously the eyes staring at the screens, the gastrointestinal system can be affected because we're sitting, we're not moving, everything's very sluggish. Uh, cardiovascular system, there has been studies looking at the risk of diabetes, heart disease, even cancers, and an increase in these areas through specifically associated with uh, having a sedentary lifestyle and particularly um, office-based. So going back to that, uh, the spine, now this could apply to the cervical spine, i.e. the neck, the lumbar spine or the thoracic spine. It just depends where all the, the, the forces are coming from when we are sitting. Now there's something called creep, uh, and, and creep is when a, uh, a tissue is, is loaded for a continuous amount of time, which then uh, means that that tissue will then start to deform. Uh, and, and if it starts to deform, then it will start to fail. And you can see here that there's a, a picture of a, a, a disc with the soft jelly substance in the middle. The, the little sort of bit on the left is looking down on the axial view, looking down on that disc. And you can see there's a split in the disc and sometimes the, uh, the, the soft tissue in the middle can escape and, and pass through there if it's put under a huge amount of pressure. And that's what happens when we're sitting. We're not moving, so we are applying this constant pressure. So we get what we call torn or herniated discs or prolapse discs. Um, there's no such thing as a, a slip disc, really, but it's a bit of a layman's term, but it's more that the discs start to bulge. I think someone needs to mute. Um, shall I wait for them to mute, Sherry? They're muted. Thank you. So, um, so these discs, uh, <clears throat> when they do start to bulge, if you again look at that picture, you can see that the back of the disc on the between the two vertebrae is starting to bulge out and compress onto a, a nerve. And that may be, if it's in the lumbar spine, it could be what people call the sciatic uh, or sciatica because it's compressing the sciatic nerve. But it could be compressing other major nerves like your femoral nerve 
or in the in the neck. It could be compressing nerves, so people might get symptoms down the arm. These are all very common complaints that we get, which can be associated with the working from home or sitting at a workstation for prolonged periods. Also, I've mentioned there the facet joints. So these are the little joints at the back of the, the spine that are actually what we call limiters of movement. These can be affected um, by if the disc starts to dehydrate, gets thinner, as shown in that particular diagram, then those little facet joints start to weight bear more often. And they shouldn't be there to weight bear. They should just be stopping us being like owls and spinning our, our necks round and 360 degrees. So they're not weight bearing, but so they will easily degenerate, causing more problems, more pain and discomfort. And I've just mentioned osteoporosis because within the spine itself, if we're sitting for prolonged periods, we're not getting that weight bearing um, effect. So we're not loading it properly. And therefore, you start to get demineralization and, and thinning of the bone. So there are a lot of other widespread uh, problems that can be associated with that inactivity. And I think one of our um, uh, clinicians, he did a, a, a or he demonstrated that uh, professional cyclists actually uh, a lot of them have a osteoporosis or have had in the past because they're sitting for prolonged periods and these are guys that are incredibly fit and supposedly healthy but it just shows to show if you if you don't use it you lose it and and that was uh, that can be the case so uh, this slide is uh, showing how posture can affect the disc pressure it's actually looking at the L3 and L4 disc between the two vertebrae. If you look on the left-hand side, you can see the little vertebra there with the, the two vertebrae with the disc in between. And um, that's demonstrating uh, when the patient is upright, you can see that there is 100% of pressure. They've just used that as a reference. Uh, so the forces are going straight down through the spine. You look at the other four pictures uh, across the top there of, of people that are in different sitting positions. And underneath each one, it gives the angle at which they are sitting. Now, you'd think that sitting bolt upright would be uh, the best, but actually it's not the best. You don't want to be sitting completely 90 degrees because that increases the pressure on that particular vertebra, uh, that disc by, in this study, by another 40%. If you bend forward further, 80%, you're going to get a further, no, sorry, 80 degrees, you're going to get a further 90% increase in pressure. So they found that between 100 and 110 degrees, you're going to get the best um, or the least amount of pressure on the lumbar vertebra. So we need to make sure that when we're sitting, we're not bolt upright, we're not bending forward, uh, looking at a laptop, for instance, which is what the person uh, on the furthest right would be doing, perhaps, or their mobile or a tablet. So that's the sort of thing you want to avoid. You want to be 110, 105 degrees around there, which will then reduce that pressure. And I'll show you um, some um, of the optimum ways to do that shortly. This just reinforces that point. Uh, again, a graph showing the effects of posture on lumbar spine pressure. So if you're looking at the, um, the red bar with the person standing, that's 100 percent bending forward. The next one up to the right, you'll see 150, so 50 percent increase and then bending forward with a weight. 220 percent so and, and the sitting positions you can see if they're slouching it goes up to 185 percent slouching in it with with weight 275 percent so you can influence hugely the amount of pressures you're putting on your own back by having the correct posture not only uh looking at the low back but also uh, the neck itself this is a great uh, depiction of how if you're going from zero degrees flexion in the neck uh, to 60 degrees, the, the diff because of the moments of force, you'll see that the, the weight of the head will effectively increase up to 27 kilos from five kilos, just from that going through those ranges of movement from 15 to 30 to 45 to 60 degrees. Um, and that is going to put a tremendous strain on the muscles, the ligaments, the discs, again, 
just and, and if you're maintaining that position for prolonged periods, it really is hugely detrimental to the musculoskeletal frame. So just looking at the soft tissues, which I mentioned before about the, the muscles and the tendons, the, myo, the, the fascial tissues, we have what's called our, our core muscles in, in, the, in the spine, which are those that don't fatigue easily. So they're the ones that help to keep us erect, which is why we call them the erect spiny muscles. And they're like the framework around our spine. But we also have other muscles that help with the core. And this is where Pilates, they, you know, the instructors, they will focus on this sort of thing. And, and we do this at the public clinic with our Pilates classes. So um, what you've got to do is make sure that all these are conditioned properly by going to do Pilates or doing this at home so that then you can at least have the, the right muscles firing and working when you are in a sitting position. If those muscles aren't conditioned, then they will fatigue and they will start to cause pain and they will affect the function of the spine. Not only that, but what will happen is the, 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 the body will start to then try and recruit the larger muscles, which are supposed to be for movement, not for those static um, sitting positions or standing positions. And, and because they're being recruited for something they're not designed to do, they will start to fail. To compound that problem, if you then have um, weakness of the bigger muscles because they're not doing anything, you're sitting for prolonged periods and you get something like the Sagittarius syndrome where you've, you've actually not got enough strength in things like the gluteus maximus muscles, you get shortening of your um, hamstrings, which they mentioned there, the semitendinosis, biceps, semimembranosis. If these start to shorten and become weak, then it just causes further problems and, and, and the core stability muscles be under greater strain, so compounding the problem. And I've just mentioned that there. So you're going to get strained muscles, strained tendons, and quite often people try and um, combat that by getting out of the office and then whizzing down the gym to do a whole load of strengthening exercises, which generally would be good, but quite often those muscles are in a shortened condition and they've, they've, they're, they're already very tight so people often get injuries because of that so you've got to do it in a very regimented fashion and have someone helping you to understand how to work these muscles in order to not get injuries to them whilst you're training but also to help you whilst you're sitting so you want to avoid things like the tendonitis which is the inflammation of the tendons and a change in the way the tendons are functioning not only that but if you have got problems with the uh, musculoskeletal frame and, and, and all the nerves that travel through these muscles and ten, uh, tendons and the, uh, the fascia, then that could have an effect on the, the nerves that travel through these areas, but also the cardiovascular system. So people may come to complaining of pain, numbness, tingling, which can all be associated with this long-term chronic conditions that have been set up from uh, having the, the sedentary lifestyle and working from home or in the office. I've already mentioned about the fact that you get neck pain, thoracic pain, shoulder pain, elbow pain, wrist, hand, but also um, sinus drainage, for instance. So there are patients who will come because they've got such tension in their, their neck and around the shoulders that they, uh, they don't get the drainage through the lymphatic system. Uh, they can also have stress and anxiety from the symptoms that they're getting from the uh, working from home but also just generally from obviously staring at a computer all day, every day, um, which can then result in poor sleep. You can get cervicogenic headaches and tension headaches, which is becoming more and more common. And some osteopaths are now specialising in these areas because we're seeing far more of these things. And also I mentioned about that bowel dysfunction and other areas that uh, are a bit more left field, but we can definitely associate with this. So, um, I know that all sounds a bit doom and gloom, uh, so sorry about that. I hope I haven't scared you into giving up your job tomorrow. But um, what I think we can do uh, is try and at least get our, our workstations uh, set up in the best way possible to, as a, to mitigate against all those problems I've mentioned already. 
So uh, here you've got a, a picture of um, three options of uh, the workstation position, um, all it, trying to keep in a very ergonomic, uh, efficient manner with the sitting position on the left, uh, looking at keeping a, a pretty straight spine, but as I mentioned before, going to the 105 degrees at the base of the spine, having a lumbar support, and I'll, I'll just uh, allude to that in a minute, but creating that lumbar support so that you can uh, maintain the lordosis, that curvature in the lumbar spine, also having the relaxed shoulders, um, having the screen, the top third of the screen level with your eyes is important, so you're not looking down, putting that strain on the neck, as I, I mentioned before. Also having the feet, feet either flat on the floor or having a little stool so the feet are slightly angled towards you. That's a good, good, a, good, uh, a good position to be in. But also having the knees below the pelvis is very important. So quite often I, I recommend certain things so that pelvis is slightly tilted so you can have wedge cushions uh, so that the wedge goes from back to front, uh, tapering down, creating that slight tilt of the pelvis, encouraging the lordosis in the lumbar spine and, and, and allowing then for those the knees to be below the hips, <clears throat> which is the case in the first two. But particularly in the second one, you can see the, the knees there are quite, uh, quite low compared to the hips because they're on a saddle stall and they're in a semi um, uh, and the workstation is, is obviously higher than with it when in the traditional sitting position. But now sit stand desks are becoming much more uh, common. And, and I think not only going to a standing desk, but varying it. So if you've got a telescopic desk, you can vary between the sitting um, and the standing, you know, changing throughout the day so that you're giving your, the muscles and the joints and the discs a bit of a breather. Different things are working all the time is very important. And I understand that uh, because I also talk to patients about their, uh, their home situation and working from home, and quite often there is no space for a desk. And, you know, and so you find people are working off their beds, they're working off their sofas, uh, or they're in cramped positions. And dining room tables as well. Now, it's, I understand it's very difficult, but there are things out there that you can get, um, you, know, you can buy to, to try and just improve that situation. You don't need a huge amount of space to set up a, a standing desk. If you can just put up a couple of shelves, one for the computer screen, one for uh, perhaps the uh, keyboard and mouse, or, or you can buy these little uh, telescopic um, supports for which the, the second uh, picture along demonstrates that just to try and get you into that uh, better ergonomic position. So that those are all um, great. But if you've got the space, then you really need to um, spend a, a fair bit of time making sure that you're you're setting everything up in a very uh, ergonomic um, way and, and we can help that with you there with that at the Putney clinic you know you can come and consult with us and we can talk about that uh, in greater detail so um, quite often I'm asked well what chair should I buy well I often say to patients that you can sit on a plank of wood uh, in a reasonably good position and you can sit poorly in a three thousand pound office chair so it's it's not all about the chair however I appreciate that there are chairs out there that do encourage better posture. So, yes, you might want to spend a bit of money on it, but you, you need a chair that perhaps has got good arm supports, um, but allows the shoulders to be relaxed. So ones that go up and down, chairs that the, the actual chair itself raises up and down to accommodate the, uh, the, the desk height. Uh, looking at perhaps one that swivels. If you've got multiple screens, that's important. You can put things on the chair. This is a, a little um, inflated cushion. And actually what happens is it, it makes you move around on the chair uh, itself to try and offload the, all those tissues that I was talking about. You can buy wedge-shaped ones of this these air-shaped uh, cushions again to push the pelvis into the anterior position, uh, but also you sort of slightly move around on it all the time, trying to offload different tissues. You can use lumbar roll supports. These are all very cheap, simple things that you can just put on your chair 
slip over the back of the, the chair and just you can have either the cylindrical ones or the D-shaped ones. There's lots out there that you can use just to help. Uh, there are some offices that have incorporated Swiss balls into, into their um, working life so that, you know, again, you can move around on it a little bit. You can tilt it forward so the knees are slightly lower, as I said, or just um, you, you can use it as a core stability uh, technique whilst you're sitting. But also um, if you're, you're doing Pilates, then often they incorporate uh, core stability balls, Swiss balls. Or you can have your £3,000 I don't know if that's three grand, but anyway, you can have a decent chair, which has got lots of different things that move. So the back might move. That one's on uh, the, the wheels. So that again, you can perhaps move around your workstation a little bit if you need to. So you're always directly in front of what you're dealing with. And then there's the saddle based ones or the kneeling chairs you can buy. So lots of different ones out there. Uh, other top tips. Um, really, a lot of it is about posture, uh, and and I bang on about it with my patients. They're probably very bored of it, but uh, it is so important. You've you've got to, if you're not sure how you should be sitting or how you should be standing, then you need to come in and see one of the guys here, the physios or osteos, to try and help you get into that correct posture. So then you you can work with your, you know, set your workstation up around yourself. Now that we're, we're, a lot of people are working from home, uh, I'm finding that quite a few patients are not getting the support perhaps they need from their company. So it's important you know, that you do go and ask your employer, or if you are the employer, um, <laughs> you know, I don't know where you go then, maybe uh, you either keep quiet and let all your employees suffer, but you should really give them a hand um, because it's, it's a bit of a false economy because if these people are getting pain and, and they're injured, then clearly they're not going to be as efficient in their work uh, and uh, they may take time off sick, so it becomes a bit of a false economy. You might want to use headsets with a mic for Zoom calls so you can keep moving whilst you're talking. You know, tell people that, uh, that you, you, you want to do that uh, before the call, perhaps, if you know them well, so that you, you can, you know, keep on the move. We've already talked about a good ergonomic chair, multiple screens. If you've got multiple screens, try and do it so that those screens are re as central as they can be, so you're not twisting and turning too much. Joystick mice. I thought there's a picture of a joystick yeah, mouse down there on the right. So okay, okay, take care. Bye bye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> so the joystick mouse is um, a useful uh, tool because if you think about the conventional mice, I don't know if any of you are working from a conventional mouse at the moment, but if you are, as soon as you turn your arm to place it on that mouse, that then puts strain through your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder then starts to internally rotate. That's now putting strain on the all the muscul musculature around the shoulder. So doing that for 10 hours, plus then the mouse starts to travel around the desk. So you're now starting to reach forward, causing an anteriorization of the whole shoulder girdle, putting strain on the neck. With a joystick mouse, it's pretty stationary. Um, so once it's in that position, you're now holding it in a what we call a neutral position. So it's neutral, not twisted round. So that's going to keep the shoulder in a much more neutral position. You don't start chasing it. It's just a nice little simple uh, trick to try and help uh, not put too much pressure through the, uh, the right shoulder, which again, I've seen so many people with right shoulder problems protracted shoulders because of chasing the mouse around and it's just uh, it, it can be resolved quite easily clip holders for paper so if you've got a clip holder to the side of your screen maybe that's a good thing you can read from uh, whilst you're typing regular breaks minimum every 30 minutes i would say even if it's just to get up for uh you know just walk around do some little exercises, which I'll just uh, show in a minute. I won't, I'm not going to go through the exercises, but just uh, a few that perhaps you could 
uh, incorporate. But again, these are the sort of things if you come in, well, we can actually do a bespoke exercise program for you uh, for when you're working at your workstation, but also if you're having little breaks or pre and post work. An exercise throughout the day, go for a walk if you can, get out of the office. Uh, I think I, one of the benefits of working from, a, from an office is that you can actually, you've got your commute, so at least you're doing that form of exercise. Working from home, patients are telling me now, I don't leave my kitchen or I don't leave my office because um, there's no reason. Uh, and so it's becoming more and more sedentary. Um, I just pinged up a little picture there of some exercises as this has been recorded, you should be able to access this later, but uh, really they're just a, a very generic amount that you could do uh, in between, you know, even if it's five minutes or even a couple of minutes, just stretching the tissues, doing some mobilization techniques for the joints, the muscles. Um, this is all good stuff just to try and stave off um, this con constant stress and strain and creep that I talked about earlier. Uh, the bit about kettlebells is a bit of a joke, really, but one of my patients, she said that her kettlebells really involves her uh, doing squats whilst the kettle's boiling. So uh, once the bell goes on the kettle, she knows she's finished her, uh, her little exercises. But do be disciplined. Set yourself a timer. You could even get these um, uh, uh, things for, for going for on your computer to try and flash up just to say, get up, move around, sit up straight. You know, little messages flying on the screen just to help you, remind you, to get you into that discipline of, of, of doing things differently. So in conclusion, um, we know we've got an increase in numbers of, of people who have that sedentary lifestyle and, and particularly the working from home and the huge health conse consequences that, that can come from the, the working population and the change, the way it's changing. And, it, and it's going to get worse, I think, um, unless we're uh, going to be like uh, the matrix and plug ourselves in i think we've we've just got to deal with this as best as we can um so set up your workstation it's so important to get that nailed because that's an easy thing to do um and then uh have a posture assessment change positions as often as possible take regular breaks do exercises and then um, i've mentioned there about having body mot's so a lot of patients do come in they have the body MOTs from their osteos, physios, masseurs, and, and acupuncturists, but also come and have some, uh, get, get into Pilates and do your core stability work because all of that is great preventative medicine. Okay, that's me finished. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Adrian.